Glitch Report, a podcast with news and information on high-performance computing. Today, my guest is Jesse Robbins. Jesse is the co-founder and CEO of OpsCode. Uh, Jesse, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Rich. Hey, I, um, I'm interested in, in OpsCode. I understand you guys have a product called Chef that does data center automation. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. Um, so uh, it, the Chef at its core is uh, it does a lot more than just data center automation. Um, uh, Chef is an open source framework for uh, systems integration. So uh, it does all kinds of, of different things from data centers to uh, clouds, which to us are really just data centers with APIs. Uh, same for uh, private clouds uh, for traditional kind of bare metal systems automation. Uh, we automate VMs, uh, really everything. Uh, Chef is uh, is is powerful, um, and it's uh, it's been interesting because when we you know talk across a lot of different industries, people sometimes wonder, uh, you know, well, is it built specifically for this thing? And the answer is no. It's uh, it's a it's a it's a general purpose framework, and then people uh, add a lot to it. Um, it's probably helpful, actually, um, kind of give you background on on the people that created Chef and uh, and behind OpsCode in general, um, just so you sort of know where where we're coming from um, and uh, and why we ended up building the tool that we built. Um, sure. So first of all, I'm uh, I, I I got my start, so I was a an sysadmin for ISPs in the Bay Area uh, while I was in high school. And uh, and that then I got really bored and burned out of kind of doing uh, building out uh, that stuff, and I decided to go become a firefighter. Mm. And so I was actually a firefighter in the Bay Area, um, and uh, I've maintained uh, some of my certifications still. But um, uh, in some ways, it's sort of unique me uniquely prepared me to you know be the a startup CEO. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. so I moved to Seattle um, because I couldn't afford to buy a house in the Bay Area, and uh, so I applied for two jobs. The first job was um, I applied as a uh, as a, a bus driver for King County Transit because mm -hmm. uh, it's good good for fire department testing, and the other one was Amazon had this enterprise backup uh, job open uh, to run their their enterprise backups, and uh, so I applied to both, and Amazon called me back first. So I ended up back in the tech industry um, and uh, ended up with the, the title of Master of Disaster, which kind of carried my and shaped my career there for a while. But, you know, I was a sysadmin building stuff um, and uh, sort of working at Amazon scale. Um, uh, so my, my background um, really uh, sort of comes from large scale systems automation that uh, sort of worked at, at with some of the challenges in the HPC environment. Um, although we didn't really kind of approach it or look at it that way, um, you know, this was we were sort of early in the Linux-based um, horizontally partitioned, uh, failure-oriented environments. Um, but uh, I ended up owning website availability for every site that bore the Amazon name, and uh, wow. so uh, it was uh, it was kind of a fun run. Um, and I, I left and created a conference for O'Reilly called the Velocity Web Performance and Operations Conference, which is uh, coming up and. <laughs> Uh, and so that's been kind of trying to export a lot of the knowledge from all the big companies that run, you know, really significant scale uh, to everyone else so that they can um, really, you know, deeply uh, uh, understand and succeed in, uh, you know, in these larger environments that operate a lot like an HPC environment in terms of the compute challenges, but require a lot more dynamism and other things that uh, most people ha haven't sort of had to, to deal with when they come from enterprise environments. Sure. Um, so co-founder Adam Jacob is the creator of Chef, and um, Adam came from, Adam and I actually have stunningly similar backgrounds. Um, uh, uh, he's, uh, he's actually a little bit older than I am, but uh, we basically were doing everything at the same time. Um, and uh, Adam created Chef to scratch an itch, uh, which was, you know, he wanted a really uh, dynamic, database-driven, uh, conf configurable uh, systems automation tool. And um, the ones that existed at the time uh, just didn't quite work for him. So, um, so that's how Chef was born, um, was really, you know, sysadmin solving uh, sysadmin problems um, and wanting to do it in a way that um, made everybody's lives a lot better. Um, so, yeah. uh, and then uh, the last one that's sort of uh, relevant for probably for uh, people listening to this is uh, Christopher Brown. Um, and if you haven't uh, uh, met or talked to or heard Chris speak, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, Chris was the founding architect and principal engineer of, of EC2. 
And, uh, you know, there are many myths and legends told about the way that EC2 was created. But um, <laughs> the truth is, is that uh, as Chris was the, you know, he was he was the, the, the founder of the project uh, from a technical standpoint and has shaped a lot of, um, I think, everyone's understanding about uh, the way that the sort of infrastructure as a service world should work, his primitives approach and very simple, powerful APIs. Uh, all, all sort of kind of emanated from him. Uh, he's our, our CTO now, um, and uh, uh, we're very fortunate to have him. Uh, and I'll say that you know the the myth of uh, Amazon running on surplus capacity, uh, it, or sorry, uh, EC2 running on surplus capacity, has always amused uh, both Chris and I. I was uh, I, I said absolutely no, no way. We're not you know get that that dirty thing away from from our cool production environment. Um, and I actually blocked uh, resources multiple times going to Chris. Um, uh, so he ended up having to deploy EC2 on its own hardware, um, uh, sitting cross-legged in a data center for several days. Uh, and uh, so uh, anyway, he, he he literally built it by hand. Uh, and I'm probably one of the few people that claims absolutely no credit uh, for, for <laughs> EC2. I, I can only claim to, to have tried to destroy it. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. That's a great story. So now he's part of your team. Yep. Yeah. And... Uh, so, Chef, um, you know, I, I know that uh, you've had a couple of folks on, uh, like the cycle computing guys, who have just a great story to tell about um, the kind of power that you get from, you know, what we call cloud infrastructure automation. Um, but uh, Chef is, um, uh, it, it's a tool that uh, has changed the way that a lot of people think about the problems of scale. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, uh, as a, as an open source project, it's got, um, uh, about 350 contributors now, uh, it's actually the largest open source, uh, configuration management project in history. And there's been a lot of them, um, and, uh, and a lot of big corporations coming on board to support it, um, which if you're thinking about HPC stuff, um, so for instance, Dell is now, um, a, a contributor and has been working along with this, uh, open stack, open stack project. Um, to start uh, making, you know, sort of private cloud, big compute environments. So they have something called Crowbar, which is powered by Chef, um, which allows you to deploy a lot of systems at scale. You there? Sorry, I was mute. Um, are you on slide three? Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. I'm on. Uh, I, I skipped through. Okay. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> That's uh, so let me, let me, yeah, let me, um, well, we can, so let's go to, we'll call this slide four and then we'll, we'll connect back in. Okay. So da, da, chef runs in two places, that one. Yep. Okay. Take a breath. Here we go. Go ahead. So, um, a lot of people ask about kind of how chef runs, um, at, and, uh, the, there are a couple of things. So, uh, chef runs as a client on, uh, nodes. Uh, so nodes nodes are you know individual systems, be they inside of virtual machines or hardware or uh, uh, you know what what have you. Um, and Chef's pretty lightweight. Um, it, the uh, the so the that runs as a as a client um, and it doesn't store a whole lot of data locally. Um, it connects back to a, a Chef server, um, either the open source Chef server that. Um, uh, many people use, um, or Opscode Hosted Chef, which is our uh, centrally managed, uh, hosted, multi-tenant version of the Chef server that um, is basically what our business is, is based on. Um, it's which is yeah. There's a you can try for free if you want up to five nodes, and then it uh, costs money after that. So if you want to play around with Chef, you can just go to www.opscode.com and uh, and use OHC, and uh, it will help you uh, get going, and you can decide whether Chef is. Uh, a good tool for you or not. Um, the reason why Chef is so powerful is um, we separated the data about automation. Um, so, you know, the specific host names and MAC addresses and uh, kind of all the individual components, software versions, et cetera, uh, from being stored inside of the recipes themselves. And that enables a couple of things. One, um, the Chef enables sort of real time search uh, driven. Uh, configuration. So, um, you know, you could say if you've got a 10,000 node or a, a you know, 1,000 node uh, cluster, um, tell me all the machines that are doing this current thing and execute these commands against them. You can do that in real time. Um, and when changes to those machines occur, um, you can then uh, uh, drive that back into the platform and drive new searches. So, 
it basically allows you to do programmatic control of a distributed system uh, very easily, uh, very quickly, and uh, without having to do a lot of the work up front, um, which uh, kind of changes the world for folks. Um, you know, the cycle computing example, uh, spinning up you know over a thousand servers in uh, just a couple of minutes um, uh, to solve you know large scale protein folding problems. You know, ten thousand cores sent at that, and they spun it up and spun it down when they were done. And that's all possible because of the powerful search-driven recipe uh, model. Um, and uh, so anyway, um, that's kind of a little bit about Chef. Sure. Um, the, uh, you know, if, if that's not enough, uh, uh, we can always sort of uh, show the slide of uh, the, the little Lego Chef guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got to show that. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, you know, basically uh, what we found is a lot of the problems that, um, you know, we as systems engineers and software developers and architects face um, are really the, um, the, it's the dirty work. You know, uh, people don't want to have, you don't want to have to focus on how to make systems interconnect. You want to solve the problem that you're, you're dedicating those systems to solving. And so we're really happy when people, uh, you know, kind of say, yep, I solved this once with Chef and, um, and it got rid of all the dirty work. Um, part of that is um, we, uh, we made Chef, um, uh, we made the, those recipes really easy to share. Um, and so recipes are wrapped up into cookbooks that kind of describe infrastructure. Um, and the... Um, the, the simplest thing uh, to do is to go to cookbooks.opscode.com where you can see um, over 240 uh, community maintained and submitted cookbooks for basically um, any component that you need to run infrastructure at scale. Um, uh, it, there's an increasing number of those that are kind of application specific um, uh, cookbooks, which is pretty cool, like things like Splunk and, um, you know, other sort of deployment uh, systems for, for managing, uh, you know, big environments. Um, but a lot of them are also more basic packages like Git or, uh, you know, Apache configurations, MySQL, you know, various data, data stores. Um, and, uh, you know, that was something that was very important to us when we created the company and has been a big part of um, sort of uh, getting people excited about it and building a community where people can contribute and uh, you know you don't have to start from scratch every time you've got a really powerful place to to begin. Um, as an open source project, um, I'm not sure how many uh, of the sort of listeners of, of are huge open source uh, nerds like we are, um, but it is one of the biggest projects in history um, uh, in terms of uh, our space. Um, 360 individual contributors. 70 corporate contributors, um, and I mentioned earlier, uh, Dell uh, has a big initiative that they're doing called Crowbar. Uh, we're part of the Rackspace and OpenStack um, uh, projects really deeply. VMware actually uses it, um, uh, which is important if you're sort of managing traditional uh, virtualization environments. And they actually ported us to Windows, so Chef definitely works for Windows. Um, uh, we have uh, pretty rich and getting richer support. If you, uh, you have to deal with Windows environments and for HPC, um, we, we can help you. Um, and uh, and then some of the sort of cloud management providers like RightScale and Heroku both contribute and use it. Um, so it's pretty big. It's going to be around for a while. So um, you know, if you guys want uh, uh, want to try it out um, and want to want to see what it can do, it's going to be there and it's going to get richer um, all the time. Um, and uh, the OpenStack thing, I think, is going to be a big deal for HPC just because um, it allows you to do the kind of uh, cloud computing. Uh, environment stuff uh, that seems to be coming increasingly important uh, both in HPC and really everywhere without um, without having to you know go through a whole complicated build exercise so um, you know hopefully that's that's going to be useful for people um, when you're not just building out uh, large instances but you've got um, you know dynamic instances as well that you're, you're you know big big hard problems to solve So Jesse, I guess uh, the first question that comes to mind is, who's your competitor in something like this? I mean, is it something like Puppet Labs, or is it more like platform computing, or is it there is no real um, uh, correlation there? It it kind of depends on the problem that you're trying to solve. So um, uh, certainly, uh, company, you know, when when it's just data center automation, um, you know, people evaluate lots and lots of different tools, and there are certainly uh, others out there. Um, 
the the thing that we've found generally is I, I think you actually kind of said it right. Like we're we're a, we're a new class of tool um, for a a different kind of problem, uh, for really dynamic uh, sort of complex data center configuration or cloud system configuration. And uh, because of the unique uh, real time data store and sort of the way in which you're able to drive things, um, generally once people start using Chef, it's it goes from you know being limited to a limited thing to, of you know data center and system configuration to solving a much bigger problem which is you know what is the problem I'm trying to solve and chef kind of spreads all the way through that from uh, from base configuration all the way through app level uh, configuration and so right now there really isn't um, there isn't s sort of a, 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 a head-to-head competitor at a technical or problem level there's certainly ones that you know, at a business, when we talk about it from a business context, it's different. But sure. you know, you, you mentioned Puppet. Um, uh, we have you know tremendous respect for those guys, um, and uh, the um, one of the things that I, I often suggest is uh, people try out both. Um, and you know, you can go to OpsCode and use the platform and get started right away. So mm -hmm. hopefully, hopefully, it's easier for uh, for people to to try out and get uh, get really great value immediately out of out of OpsCode and. Uh, they can also you know, try similar things with Puppet or with CF Engine, which is um, uh, another tool that is um, I've seen a lot in the HPC environments. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but hopefully, you know, what what people find is that we're we're really we're, we we solve all of those common base problems, which we sort of look at table as as table stakes, and then we enable an entirely new class of problem to be solved really powerfully. And uh, that really goes a, a, a lot deeper, and um, and and once you use it, it sort of changes the way you approach the problem. And again, I use the cycle example as as kind of the the uh, the canonical case. Yeah. So how powerful is that for you as a business to have this developer community out there that's sharing their know-how with these recipes? I mean, it, does that give you a great advantage? You know, it it does, um, and. Uh, it, Part of the part of the thing to to take away from that is, um, you know, it's as a business, um, it's important. But um, really, you know, OpsCode um, is is a participant in a community, and uh, we take that actually really seriously. So, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, open source projects um, uh, and, and the companies that are that that are uh, you know based around them uh, really have to work together pretty intensely. And you want to be able to sort of judge the health of a community by how it's growing, how people are. Uh, adopting it, um, how you know uh, how the the sort of sponsor company um, uh, and originating company uh, treats the community. Um, we we believe it we're uh, you know essentially participants, and we may be first among equals, but um, uh, it is a it's a very important part of succeeding is getting everyone together. And um, and uh, so yes, it's it's helpful for us. It's also uh, you know it only works that way because we're helpful to to everyone else. Sure. So you're you're a startup in in uh, in Seattle area, kind of yep. away away from all the the Bay uh, activity <laughs> where you came from. What, what's what's that environment like up there for you? Um, you know, Seattle's great. Um, I I do spend a lot of time uh, down in the Bay Area. Um, uh, you know, uh, our investors are uh, are in uh, are on Sand Hill and uh, and in Boston actually. Sure. Um, but uh, but basically, it allows us to focus. Um, you know, I think that a lot of there's a lot of uh, kind of Bay Area startup. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it other than there's a lot of churn and and sort of uh, you know there's always something going on. Yeah. And uh, we're kind of you know we're infrastructure people. We really we're passionate about helping other businesses, helping other uh, engineers, helping other people succeed and solve problems. And uh, and so for us, you know, we we kind of want we want everyone around us to win. And uh, and feel really good because uh, you know they're they're part of something big, so um, so that's that's easy to kind of do and emanate from uh, a place where you're not all kind of fighting for the same microphone, and so you know also Seattle's a great place. We're hiring a, a huge number of people, by the way. So if okay, uh, uh, if if any of you are interested in solving these kind of problems at scale, uh, you should definitely come and uh, you know we've got a jobs page up, but um, you can also just email me. My email address is jesse at opscode.com. Um, and uh, uh, we are we're growing very very quickly. Uh, we probably have uh, 15 open recs right now, um, and so um, actually now it's probably 20. Mm -hmm. um, so the uh, so the, the 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 interesting thing about living and and building a startup in Seattle is, um, you know, 
uh, we, we tend to work really hard and, and play really hard and uh, we, uh, we don't sort of get uh, too caught up in uh, you know which startup event is going on because there just aren't that many that happen in Seattle even though there's a great and vibrant startup community here mm -hmm. um, it's not it's not as much of a social thing um, and you know I think that probably resonates well with the uh, with with uh, other people where it's you know I don't I don't need to hang out with uh, with you know a bunch of people at a loud party in order to feel like I'm uh, and and actually be a part of something important right right well you know I, the you see that in Portland right yeah, yeah. In fact, um, you know the uh, the supercomputing conference is coming up to Seattle in November, yep. so uh, all the folks that listen to this are going to be up there in a big way. I'm an events guy going way back. I I wanted to wrap up Jesse by asking you about Velocity Conference, and it sounds like you kind of helped. You got that started. What 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 uh, prompted you to do that? Um, a couple of things. So one, um, you know, I left Amazon and um, I, I was very proud of what I and I had done and helped other people to do um, uh, in terms of building and spreading culture that is kind of required to build and, and succeed at scale. And, you know, uh, technology shifts ha happen because, uh, you know, they make people's lives better. And um, and the other thing is, is that, you know, I, I, I kind of feel like, um, you know, sysadmins and and software developers who who love infrastructure are rock stars. You know, we run we we, we run the world's infrastructure, mm -hmm. and and we didn't have a place. Um, so um, I I had uh, gotten involved with O'Reilly and met Tim O'Reilly and actually uh, joined something called O'Reilly Radar, which is the uh, sort of uh, Tim O'Reilly and friends blog. And um, I said, you know, there's this kind of secret group of people that uh, we all know how the how the the web really works. Um, we're loosely connected. We don't have a conference that really uh, meets our needs, and uh, we wouldn't go to most conferences because, frankly, we're too busy running things. So um, I, I convinced him, along with uh, a few other folks, uh, Steve Souders, um, who at the time was the chief performance Yahoo at Yahoo, and he's now at Google, um, and uh, and Adam, or sorry, um, uh, Arthur Bergman, um, who uh, was at Wikia, um, and uh, and was also on O'Reilly Radar with me. And we told Tim that we needed a conference, and that uh, you know we was kind of we set a very high bar. The bar is it has to be a conference that I myself would pay out of pocket to go to. Okay. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. and I and that's that's been kind of I think the standard for everything, and it's um it's been a real honor and privilege to to organize it. Um, and you know it's our fourth year this year. Okay. Um, there'll be you know well over a thousand people. And it's the place that you know people that think about big scale go and um, get to learn about uh, all of the uh, the sort of secrets. And it's really it's a sort of a sharing environment. Um, you know, we it's not pitchy. Um, mm -hmm. we're, we're kind of brutal to vendors, um, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's which is which is an, an interesting thing, um, uh, particularly now that I've sort of I almost accepted that I, I, I am one. Yes, um, yes. <laughs> almost, almost. <laughs> um, but, uh, but it is, uh, you know, uh, Velocity is, it's the place where people who care about performance and operations um, go. Uh, and uh, there's nothing else quite like it. I, I, um, there's a new, there's actually another conference, which I, I do like, which is Surge, uh, uh, which is sort of the, uh, it's it's a it's a similar in event, um, although uh, organized by um, a different group of people. Uh, but um, uh, Theo Schlossnagel, who is um, a, a, an amazing engineer, so I recommend both of them actually. But um, but uh, Velocity is definitely the um, the place to go um, uh, if you if you care about big scale. And we created it for us. I mean, for you know uh, the group of people that are passionate about it. Um, it's not an academic conference. Um, okay. That's kind of the the other thing to understand. So, um, you know, I, I've actually I've been pretty critical um, of uh, various uh, uh, conference events because it always seems to be slightly distracted from like there's a lot of papers that get presented and you know I'm I'm more of a rough consensus and running code kind of guy. Yeah. So um, so the you know we don't do papers it's um, you know it's it's got to be uh, stuff that is actually working now. Um, and uh, so uh, you know we're starting to bridge the gap between the more traditional academic group and um, and the uh, the sort of real world practitioner stuff that uh, frankly like you know we can't work on a 6 month cycle. Uh, because uh, some new thing may have emerged that that's already changed the world, 
Um, and uh, and so you know we we tend to hold a lot of space open until the very last minute. I actually just accepted one of the last talks yesterday. Okay. Uh, in order to uh, in order to make sure that it's super current. Um, so it is it's a little bit different in that respect. Um, but you can check out uh, some of the sessions online. Yep. Uh, and uh, from and you can just go to www.velocityconf.com. Um, and uh, I'd certainly encourage um, your uh, your your uh, listeners to attend, um, and I will actually give you a uh, a code which I, I don't have offhand, so okay. uh, you'll need to, to do it later uh, with a discount if. Uh, if you oh want yeah, I, I'll attach that to the post absolutely, um, and it looks like that's June fourteenth coming up real soon in Santa yep. Clara. Terrific. Yep. yep. Cool. Well, Jesse, I really appreciate uh, you coming on the show today. I wish you the best with uh, your company. It sounds like the sky's the limit for Ops Code and for Chef. So uh, lo love to see that. And uh, looking forward to getting up to Seattle much sooner than November. So let me, we'll look you up. All right. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Sound good? All right. Well, that's it for the Rich Report, folks. Stay tuned for more news and information on high-performance computing.